Hi guys, so I've decided to do a video on um, Paint.net, which is basically the app that I use for um, making thumbnails and all that sort of stuff for my YouTube channel. Any video editing, any image editing at all, to be honest, it's, uh, it's fantastic. So I just wanted to give a sort of overview of what it is, how to use it, and how you guys can use it for, um, for thumbnails. Basically, it's a free app, and it's got a lot of the uh, usable features of um, Photoshop. So, without having to pay all that money, you can um, can get going. So, the basics of it. What we've got here, on the left here, is all your normal things that you're used to seeing in, um, in Paint. So, you've got selecting stuff, and then you've got moving the stuff around that you've selected. So you can see there that hatch means that it's uh, invisible behind. You've got manipulating the area that you've selected, which you can then move again. Um, <clears throat> there's all sorts really. Um, but for for what we're going to be using this for, I'll try and keep it to the basics. Now, what you can see up here in the left hand, sorry, the right hand top corner is your history. So if you want to undo all that, what you can do is you can choose a specific point at which you want to go back to. So you can go back to that point there, which is my first select, or you can go back to where I'd moved it, or anywhere in between. So everything you do is basically kept up here in the history. Um, what you've got here is your layers. Layers are so you can have like an image as your background layer and then text on top of it but it keeps them separate. So if you save the file with layers, you can uh, manipulate it without having to go through any sort of rigmarole of, of blanking out the background and all that. But that'll become obvious when uh, when I do it. You've got your colors down here, color wheel. You can choose all this sort of stuff. You can choose whether you want it to be have a level of opacity, so it's like basically see-through, all that sort of stuff. Um, that's basically it. Another thing that you'll need to be using is effects here. So you can do all sorts of stuff like making things blurred. Um, you can make things look like an oil painting or a pencil sketch. Um, you can work on photos to make them sharper and all that sort of stuff. There's all sorts of random stuff. <clears throat> make stuff black and white. Uh, adjustments, you can change the colour and all that sort of stuff. Um, I rarely use most of this, but you can make things into sepias, so little like old photographs, if you're that way inclined. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and basically start making a thumbnail for an imaginary video. Now, um, there's several ways that you can open uh, an image in here. You can go to click, open, find a file, open it that way. You can copy and paste, but the way that I tend to do it is I find the picture that I'm after and then I drag it on like that. So you drag it from a window into here. Then you get the option of opening it on this layer so it would replace my background here which is white or I can add it as a new layer. And what you'll notice at the top right here we've got background and layer. So what I'm going to quickly do is make this so it fills the screen like that. So that's going to be my background image. Um, and what you can do is you can turn that on and off as a layer, which you can see there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the text, so I'm going to click text, I'm going to choose my font that I want to use, which is this one here. I'm going to choose the size, which all can be changed afterwards. That's far too big as you can see, so I'm going to change it down to that. Now at the moment you'll notice it's black, and we don't want it black because that doesn't stand out. What we want is we want white with a black um, outline. So what I tend to do is I flip my colours here so it goes white. This button here basically flips the two colours you've got chosen for left click and right click around. Um, again, you can use other colours. Except I've done this wrong, so <laughs> here's an example of what you don't want to do. What I've done there is I've put it on the same layer as my picture. So now, if I want to move this text around, I can't because it takes the, uh, it takes the background picture with it. So what you want to do instead is you want to use this button down here. So you've got create layer, you've got delete layer, you can move layers up and down so they go on top of each other. And you've got duplicate layer. For this one, I just want to add a new layer here, layer three. And then while layer three is selected, I want to go back to my text and put sample 
video, I'm going to center it, and I can drag it to where I want it, like that. Now, because that's a separate layer, I can select, for example, sample, and I can move it around. I can turn the layer on and off, so that you can see it with or without. That's the beauty of layers, basically. When you come to using to using layers, um, it, it changes everything. What you can also do is I could take, for example, half of this video, half of the background, so you select background, take half of it, copy it, add a new layer, paste it into there, and then what I can do is by moving this layer up, see, I can cover up half of what I've done. It's, it's things like that. So you could have, um, you could basically have a border at the top and bottom saved as layer, as a layer, and then your image when you paste it in will go behind that, as an example. So I've got my sample video here, it's all sorted, it's the right size that I want, but you'll notice it doesn't have any sort of outline on it, and when you go into the text options, there is no option to have any kind of outlining. You've got the size, you've got bold, you've got whether you want it smooth, sharp, You've got the alignment, you've got whether you want anti-aliasing, you've got uh, blending, all that sort of stuff. So what you have to do is, because you've got it sort of localized as its own layer, what we can do is we can use a plugin that I downloaded, which allows you to add background like shading to things. So if you've got an object, in this instance, I've got a uh, basically a transparent layer with just the words sample video on them. So I'm going to go to object and drop shadow. So um, there, I don't know if you can see that, there's a few details of where I got it from, as you can see there, um, paint.net effects from somewhere or other. Um, the name of it is paint.net effects drop shadow version 3.8. So you should be able to find it on the internet, again that's free. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to apply a drop shadow. Now, what that does is at the moment, because I've selected white as my main colour, it's using white as the drop shadow. So all I tend to do is you can choose another colour here. You can go blue, you can go red, green. Um, what I tend to do is, because I want a black one, is I take this here, which is the shade, and I just slam it down to black, as you can see there. Then what I tend to do is you can widen the radius of the, um, the shadow, like that. You can put it full, and then you can also adjust the sort of fade that you want as well. So you can have something pretty cool like that. What I tend to do is bang everything in the middle, and it gives me a sort of overall shade behind everything. Looks quite nice. And what you can also do is you can make it so that you've got a, um, a shadow off to one side. So you can actually change, see that I'm changing the sides that it goes to? And then you can also change whether it goes up and down. So by making it go down slightly and then off to the side, you can actually make it like that there, where the uh, the shadow goes down into the side and it makes it look like it's sort of hovering above the picture. Um, I'm not keen on that for thumbnails, though I have used it for, for other stuff. Um, but basically that's, that's what I do there. Now... You can get it so that it replaces the, the object that it's shading with just shade, like that. <laughs> but you probably don't want to do that. And then you can click OK, and what we've got there is you've got this layer here, which has now got our words which are shaded in, as you can see there. Fairly simple. You can, uh, if you weren't sure, and then you can sort of undo it, like this. You can go all the way back up and then all the way back down. It's a really useful app, and considering that it's free, and the guy basically lets you use it for commercial purposes and all sorts without any uh, without any worry, you can't really go wrong. Um, I guess that's everything I wanted to show you for the basic usage of it. Hopefully it helps people in making thumbnails look a bit prettier. Um, of course, if you want to do a block colour, you can go down here and uh, do like solid pictures. You can also do gradients. Um, so say you wanted um, a background or a, a top bit. If you wanted a, a box at the top with a gradient across it, what you can basically do is, first, select where you want the box to go. So say I want it to go, let's make a, let's make a layer first. So I've made a new layer. This is the box that I want to fill. 
So what I do is I go here, and what that means is I'll only be I'll only be affecting what's in that box. So let's make it blue and red. I've chosen for my left and right click down here. So what what should happen is when I click and then drag, I get that sort of effect there. And it only happens in the box that I selected. And again, I can move that up and down to go behind stuff, in front of stuff. Um, I can move layer three so it goes over like that. Which looks pretty cool. All that sort of stuff. Really basic. Um, hopefully I've explained it fairly well and you guys can use it. So feel free to pause, rewind. I'm going to make this private for the um, Legion of Gamza. Help you guys out. Hopefully, with making Kikas um, uh, basically thumbnails. Sorry, I lost my train of thought there. Another thing you can do is if you were to save this, you can open it up again and say you want the same text, the same border across the top there, but a different image. You can go back to your pictures. You can find another image. Let's say, oh, this one. Drag it in, add it as a layer. Make sure it's the same size. And then basically you just push it to the back. So you can do that there. So you've kept the bar across the top. You've kept your wording on top of it. But you've changed the, uh, the picture really quick. Uh, and you can basically use it in that way as a, as a template basically for future videos. So you can just put in a picture. Just drag and drop a picture for each of your videos into the same template save it under a different name bish bash bosh off you go one last thing to explain I suppose is how you actually save it so if I were to go to save now you'll notice it saves as a .pdn and what that does is it saves everything it'll save the layers that I've got it'll save all that stuff so I can go back and I can edit this and get rid of layers and use the layers but if you were to go save as a JPEG and save that you can choose the quality there what it'll ask you to do here is to flatten it what that basically means is all of these layers down the right hand side here are all being flattened together and you've lost all that information so if you were to save it just as a JPEG you're gonna lose all of these layers here that you that were really useful for, for what you were doing so what you want to do is you want to save it as a PDN first and then you want to save it as a JPEG to use with um, with YouTube for the, the thumbnails. And that is basically it. So hopefully I haven't gone too quick and hopefully you guys have learned something from it and it's uh, helpful for you basically. Uh, this one was uh, for Phil especially but if anyone else finds it useful then all the better. Everybody should be using free stuff to to basically make the most professional things that they that they can. Right, that's about the end of the video. Thank you for watching. And leave me comments, any questions you've got. I can make further videos on further things if you want. And I'll only be posting this into the Legion of Gamza um, Facebook group. It's going to be a, a private uh, video. Right, thanks guys. I'll speak to you on Facebook. Cheers.